Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to My Hero Academia, Season 4, Episode 7. So you may notice we're back with the old webcam. Um, if you didn't realize yesterday, I had posted a video um, regarding the webcam thing, uh, using both the old and the new webcam together, side by side, to kind of give you a comparison. And I wanted you guys to tell me um, which you think would be better for reactions and which you think I should... Uh, continue to use in the future and whatnot. Um, and it was resoundingly one-sided. Like, you guys all chose the right option, which on the screen on the right was the old camera, uh, the old webcam, the one I've been using for years now. And so you guys clearly think this one's better. Um, the lighting's not the best in here right now. I have pretty much every lamp on. <laughs> Um, to try and get some kind of central lighting because it's getting dark out because I waited forever. I procrastinated in getting to this um, today, but yeah. <laughs> um, so, we're going back to, at least for now, using this camera. I'm uh, going to keep the, web, uh, the new webcam in case we ever need it or ever want to use it or for whatever reason. Or if maybe I can figure out how to zoom out and everything on it, and that might help. But for now, we'll go back to using this one. Um, and yeah, hopefully we have a lot of fun with it. And hopefully it's a better experience for you guys. And just overall works better. So that being said, uh, last we left off, we had an unpleasant talk. <laughs> um, so... Night Eye gathered a bunch of uh, smaller pro heroes together, um, as well as the uh, students who are working with the Big Three um, and their agencies. So we get this big group of heroes together, and the goal is to rescue Aerie uh, from Kai Chisaki, also known as Overhaul, and the uh, Shie Saikai. Uh, so they want to rescue Aerie because they're putting together that, um, because of presumably Aerie's quirk, the Shie Hasaikai are using her blood in order to make these quirk-canceling, um, like, drugs, basically. <sighs> Excuse me. Which uh, explains all of the bandages and stuff we saw on Aerie before. And everybody's all, like, just irritated by it, by the news and everything. Um, we also found out Overhaul, the specifics of Overhaul's quirk, which I did know, I, I did learn about before the, I watched the last episode. Um, basically, he can uh, both disassemble and reassemble matter. He can break something apart basically at the molecular level, but he can also put things back together. And we, I guess, don't know how it works with, like, people. Like, we know he can disassemble people, basically make them explode. Um, but can he reassemble people he exploded? And would they be able to come back to life or not? There's a lot of questions that go into that. Um, I don't know for sure pretty much all, so. Um, but yeah, like with anything else, like let's say he took part, I don't know, a toaster or something, just as an example. He disassembles a toaster, he could put it back together, um, good as new, and it would work. And he could probably even put it back together in a different shape, even, as long as it contained, obviously, the same amount of material. Um, which kind of makes me think, like, I presume that's how it would work, at least, and that kind of makes me think of Josuke Higashikata from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable, because um, that's basically what his stand power was. He could heal things or, like, reassemble them, basically. One such example is he could cut up a rubber glove into tiny pieces, swallow it, and then use his stand power to reassemble it while in his stomach 
to be able to trap an enemy stand inside the rubber glove. And he could like punch a hole into someone's body, but then reassemble them good as new, basically in the blink of an eye. And it's, it's a really like well-crafted ability, both in JoJo and it could be very easily in here, depending on how, again, they implement it going forward. Now, the difference is, well, actually, no, I was going to say the difference is that uh, overall has to physically come into contact with someone, but no, because Josuke has to as well. Josuke can only heal someone or fix something that he touches. So, yeah, actually, both of them have that going, too. So, yeah, it's like it's practically the same thing, with the big exception being that Overhaul's quirk also has the ability to disassemble. Which, I mean, I guess Josuke could do that just by destroying it regularly, but it's not part of his power. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so everyone's kind of on edge and they're getting ready to enact this plan. All these different heroes are going to go to these different locations uh, and basically scope things out. And whoever can like rescue Aerie and everything is going to have to do so. Now I presume that considering how this story is going and Izuku and Togata's uh, like influence in, in how things have gone already, I assume that wherever they go is going to be where Aerie actually is, and where the main uh, battle is going to take place, because I assume there's going to be a main, a main battle uh, with Overhaul and his direct minions and stuff, and maybe even the League of uh, Villains uh, will be there. But yeah, I definitely think it's going to be surrounding uh, Mirio and Deku for obvious reasons. Uh, I, I would love to see Sue and Uraraka join in on that, and I, I mean, I assume they might have like a little moment of awesome action themselves at wherever they're at, but I, I just don't see it going any other way. <laughs> Again, with how it's all been set up, it's got to be Deku and Mirio, and whoever they might be with. I don't think Kirishima is going to be with them. I don't think Uraraka and Sue is going to be with them. I think they're going to be off on their own um, with the other, uh, with their members of the big three and all. Um, Bubble Girl and Night Eye might be with them, though. That, that I will give it. Those two might be with them because it might just be th that agency is going to one location. And, like, the Ryukyu agency is going to one location. The, um... Fat Gum Agency goes to one location, and then so on and so forth. Aizawa goes to one, and all these other heroes. Uh, Rock Lock, I think the one guy's name was. Um, but yeah, kind of that entire thing. But I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. I might be completely wrong. It might pull a big twist and... Um, Mirio and Deku might not be anywhere near it. Who knows? Uh, I guess we'll just have to find out, though. So, that being said, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in three, two, one, now. The calm before the storm. A phrase referring to when something big is about to go down and it's just the moments beforehand feeling so not really boring or anticlimactic but just Generally, slow, calm, relaxing, or just not much of anything actually happening. 
And that is what I would consider this episode, up until the end, of course. Most of this episode is the calm belt, right between the big information episode we had last time and what is about to go down with this massive raid and these eight bullets of the Shia Hakaisai. So most of this episode was just basically our heroes waiting, waiting for the call to come in. We saw a little bit of the uh, intel gathering and whatnot, but a lot of it was just waiting. We saw Izuku worrying over this. Uh, we saw Kirishima wishing he could tell Bakugo. We saw Izuku staring at the fish. <laughs> um, and we saw them head in. In the middle, well, get their messages in the middle of the night so they would head in early the next morning. Um, it's all the build-up. And I've said before, I, I have said before with many shows that when you have a build-up like this, it has to have a good payoff. It has to come to a head in a very satisfying way. Um, and, and I obviously don't know yet if it will, but I'm kind of presuming, because it's My Hero Academia, that it will. <laughs> um, but we start to see that payoff at the very end of this episode, once they arrive at the Shie Hakaisai's main base. Unfortunately, the Hakaisai knew they were coming. They have some kind of intel on the inside, it seems. They knew they were coming in, they were able to prepare. So we saw Overhaul talk to someone he called Pops. This guy was basically in a hospital-like bed situation and was clearly in his dying days. Um, Over, Overhaul called him Pops, which, as I mentioned, like at first, my first thought was, oh, father? But then when I thought about it more, it's like, oh, wait, no, they're a Yakuza group. So Pops could be more like, he's like the head of the, of, of the Yakuza, of the Shie Hakaisai. Because, again, I do believe it mentioned, I do believe it said that uh, Overhaul is the second head. That he's like the second in command, basically, which means that there is someone above him. And if that is this guy, then, well, okay. But also, him being in his deathbed would explain why uh, Kai Chisaki uh, overall has the full control, it seems, right now. Um, but we also saw that apparently there's these uh, members of the Shia Hakaisai known as the Eight Bullets. One of which was that massive guy whose personality was very much like Sloth from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Um... And it's like, he, he actually very much reminds me of him with the entire strength thing as well, uh, and the size. Um, but then we saw glimpses at the others who will presumably come in next episode, uh, maybe even the episode after. Um, however, because Overhaul and the Hakaisai knew about this raid, they were they're able to prepare by having the eight bullets basically distract and keep the heroes and police back they're able to get to Aerie and move her and hide her for good um which was a concern i believe that was brought up in the meeting about like if they wait they could end up uh, they could lose the opportunity to get to Aerie. so yeah this is obviously a problem <laughs> Um, but, I, and they don't even know, they don't even fully know that they were expected. So yeah, it's not a good situation in any manner. Um, but I am excited to see what they do with it going forward. Um, otherwise there's not really too much to talk about with the direct content of like most of the episode itself wasn't even, there wasn't a lot happening for obvious reasons. 
Um, oh, crap. Did my camera die? I apologize for that. When did that happen? Okay. Um, but yeah, there wasn't really a lot happening overall. Because again, most of the episode was the calm before the storm. Uh, it only really started with the raid at the very end. Um, I will say, I really liked the moment with Ida in the cafeteria, though, when he brought back what, uh, what Uraraka and Deku said to him when he was kind of in his dark place in the Stain arc. So I, I'm really glad that that was brought, brought up. Um, and, and there was, of course, uh, Todoroki helping out as well, since he was involved in that entire thing in the end. Um, it, it was just, it was just a really nice moment. Um, we also got to so see Ryukyu's quirk. Um, we really didn't get to see that before when she, Uraraka, and Sue were doing their little thing in the past. Um, but we actually get to see it. She can actually physically transform into a dragon, which is badass as fuck. <laughs> like, that's just really fucking cool. Let's be honest here. That is just a really fucking cool quirk. Um, and we've seen, like, quirks and stuff that can, uh, that can transform you, that can transform the user and stuff like that. Like, that's nothing inherently new overall. But it's just, like, she, she grows into, like, this massive dragon, and it's like, holy shit. It was just really cool. Um, the design was a little silly, sure, but... I mean, there's been really silly quirk designs and stuff with uh, how they physically manifest, so it's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, that was that was really cool to see. Um, I also like that this isn't just like, oh, they're going on a, a good word or anything. Uh, Night Eye had like legitimate intel because of his quirk, because of <laughs> seeing the one dumbass. <laughs> We saw that dumbass before uh, trying to be the caretaker for Aerie and not really knowing what little girl's like. And we saw that, uh, <laughs> that it just happened that Night Eye happened to be in the same store as him at that time. It just worked out perfectly. Um, but yeah. Yeah, the, the big stuff's going to start happening next episode. And I think I said it before, but... I do believe someone could die during this mission. I don't think it'll be one of the main characters for obvious reasons. It's not going to be Izuku, Uraraka, Su, Kirishima. It's not going to be one of the big three or their mentors. Um, and I, I don't think it's going to be Aizawa either. It's If anyone's going to die, it's going to be one of the minor heroes, like Rocklock or someone like that. Or... Or... It's going to be someone whose death would mean something without it being too, like, like too much. <laughs> Although, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I, I, I would put it past My Hero Academia to kill off a character, a big character. But if it's going to be someone, it's going to be someone who isn't really, like, too massive a character to the overall story and would just their death would still mean something though it would still be important and a big deal so the big thing i would think of with that would be night eye if i'm if i'm being honest night eye dying would uh, he's he's a big character for this arc but prior to this and everything he he wasn't really even known of so, uh, him dying would be big in terms of the arc and finding out, you know, he's All Might's former sidekick and everything. But it wouldn't be too detrimental to the series. It wouldn't feel like it was, oh, just killing off a random, uh, a major character for shock value, like Aizawa or someone. Um, but yeah, I, I, even that, I think, is a stretch. And I said no to uh, the heroes that the big three are working under outside of... Although, I mean, obviously, Mirio's working under Night Eye. 
I, I was more referring to the others, Fat Gum and Ryukyu, but I guess maybe one of them could could end up dying. I don't know. It's just it's hard to say. Because it, it's hard to say if I if I really even think someone will die. It's just kind of like I could see it, and I very very much could see it happening. But I, I obviously don't know for sure. I obviously have no real reason to believe that anyone will die. You know what I mean? It's just kind of, I guess you could say, a guess at this point. Just a, uh, idea. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But if it's going to be anyone outside, it's either going to be a, a sm one of the smaller heroes... Or it's going to be one of the big three mentors, I guess, now that I'm thinking about it more. But if it is going to be one of the big three mentors, I think it would make the most sense for it to be Night Eye. Just because, narratively, I think it would work out the best. Because killing off Fat Gum or Ryukyu, I don't think would really make that big of a difference in terms of the narrative. If they're going to kill off someone outside of a uh, outside of one of the minor uh, small time heroes that we've met throughout this, it's going to be someone that they want to have an impact on the readers. In, in case of the original manga that this is based off of, which obviously this would be taking from, so that they'd want it to have an impact on the readers and, by extension, the viewers. Um, and again, with Ryukyu and Fat Gum, even though I know that Fat Gum is very much loved by the fandom, I don't know about Ryukyu, though. Um, but I, I don't think either of them would have a big enough impact. So, yeah. Either, it, it would either be them or maybe Bubble Girl. Just because her being a fan character would definitely elicit a big reaction from the fans. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe no one will die. <laughs> I mean, if we're lucky. It's just it's just theory at this point. It's just uh, just guesswork. Because, um, again, I don't know what's coming. I, I, I don't read the manga. I don't read any manga. I don't know any of the big spoilers coming up for the time being. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know much. Because most of the spoilers I did know have uh, for the series going in, in, into the future have already been revealed by this point. Because Overhaul's Quirk like was one of the newer ones. And before that, it's like I just knew characters existed, basically. And pretty much all of them have been revealed. So it's like, at this point, I know next to nothing... Like, I, I know more about what's coming in the Attack on Titan manga compared to where the anime was. So it's like, yeah. So who knows? Who knows? Um, I hope no one dies. That is my hope. I hope no one ends up dying except, I guess, maybe villains. But I, I don't think that's necessarily going to happen too. Either. Whichever. Um, and I hope they are able to rescue Ares somehow. Those are my big hopes going forward. Um, I One thing I can say is I don't think that this will be able to be completed in the next episode. This mission is definitely going to take at least two more episodes, I think, to fully finish. Because, um, again, there's eight of these... Uh, eight of these bullets... And you're definitely not going to be able to get through all of them in one episode without it making without making it feel too rushed. So I think we're going to have it, at least two more episodes to finish this up, uh, this part of the arc and all, and we'll we'll see where it goes from there. That's that's my uh, guess at least. That's my hypothesis. <laughs> um, but tell me in the comments below what you thought of this episode and where do you think it's going next. Um, unless, of course, you know where it's going next, and then no spoilers. No spoilers. I wish to remain as spoiler-free as possible, as always. Uh, but either way, thank you so much for tuning in, and for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time. 
Hey everyone, Connie here, and thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. If you want to check out any of my social media links and more, please check them out over to the side. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave those down below. In the meantime, though, thank you so much once again for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.